What's good, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback, back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And I have my big, unk, per usual, big Nate dog in the building over here. And then we have a special guest. Okay, my son. Nah, he's not my son. Nah, but he's, my, <laughs> he's one of my good friends, Mr. JCH, Baby Hulk. Lil J, uh, I don't even know all the other names you got. Man, all Elf. the above. Huh? The Elf. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Lord Mr. of the Rings. Mr. Jared Harrison this is one of my one of my closest friends and my business partner, man. What's up with you, Jay? Man, we good, baby. We just going to make the show name uh, Nate, Zay, and Jay. Uh, and Nate, Zay, and Jay. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Nate, Zay, and Jay. <laughs> baby, Hulk, Lord. That's, That's it. That's then you going to put on green. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, do you know why we call the show Let Me Tell You Something? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Tell me why. Go ahead. Go ahead talk to him, Nate. Let me tell you something. It started, I mean, because every time, if I get to talking to you more than three minutes, if you should have realized before the show, I'm like, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they named it that right now. But I wanted to change it when Zay came in, but, you know, hey, let me tell you something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. So we're going to kick it off with a new little segment here uh, that we're going to say, say it with your chest. Mm. Can I say, uh, yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah, you hear the best, right? I got, I got to do some going more push-ups. Okay. Go on yeah, to baby Hulk. Go on to baby Hulk. Oh, the percolating oh, pectorals. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> percolating. <laughs> oh, boy, got the extra <laughs> medium. I'll tell you what. We're going to say it with our chest. He's trying to get an Old Spice commercial. Yeah. Old Spice, he'll holler at us if y'all want to be a sponsor. But right. um, say it with your chest. I want to go around the room. You know, I want y'all to make a, a bold statement. You know, saying it with your chest. Uh, Cooper Rush has been a better quarterback than Dak Prescott this year. Yes. Agree or disagree? Agree. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. He gets the ball out in 2.4 seconds. That's only second to Tom Brady. Okay? Mm. He know where he, know where he wants to throw the ball. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. What, what, what you got for say with your chest? Agree. Okay. Yep. Yes. I mean, it looks like that boy knows the game a little bit more fundamentally right now. Ooh. Man. All right. Two and over him. <laughs> oh, on with your other boy. All right. Uh, Nate, you got you to say with your chest uh, statement today? Man, I got to think on that, man. Mm. I'm going to let the huckster go. Yeah, you're going to let Baby Hulk uh, go. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do it like this. Yeah, yeah. Be bittersweet. Okay. CeeDee Lamb is our number one receiver. I can't I can't agree with you on that one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Noah Brown on that one. Noah Brown's I'm going one. with you 100%. Yes, sir. Ooh, he okay. He's number one. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So I think he, I mean, he picked himself back up. Like, it, uh, yeah, what, what is it? What's this? Uh, we fall down, but we all get back up. Is that, <laughs> is that, what, we're doing, is that, is that what we're going off of? I mean, the boy made up for his mistakes. Wow. The boy made up for his mistakes. Wow. I mean, he had a drop ball, as, as we all, you know, That's he right. dropped some, even the best yeah. drop. Okay. Okay. Wow. Then the boy came back with a one handed. Uh, should we call that the Odell or should we call that the Zay? What, wow. what are we going to call that? Wow. I, I started it. I definitely started. Okay. They didn't give me no, no they don't give me no photo credit, but I definitely started that. Y'all go back. This is a, we got we got stamps for that. Uh, wow. yeah. Receipts, my fault. Receipts. They mm. done. <sighs> Let me see where I came. Where I can get you from, Nate? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna make this bold statement right what, here. What you got? At the end of the year, Zeke will be the leading rusher. In the Ooh. league? No. Ooh. For the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. That's about all I can say, okay. man. Because right. I'm, I'm going to tell you what. You you caught me all but said with your chest, man. I've heard you say that a thousand times. Yeah. And I, that automatically put me what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know. I like, it. It I like it. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep that segment going as we as we continue with this say show, y'all. You gotta chest. say it with your chest. When you say it with your chest, that means you gotta stand firm behind it. You yes. gotta you gotta you don't don't waver. All right, be steadfast in everything that say you say. Say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. chest. Is, Zeke, and then, and yeah. is Zeke the yeah. starting running back for the Dallas Cowboys? Yes. Or is it Tony Pollard? No, it's, it's Zeke. It's it's Zeke. Don't it's do Zeke. that. Don't Zeke. do that, Nick. Yeah. Don't do that. Zeke the freak. Yeah, Zeke the freak. Might be Karate Turpin. What makes you feel that way? Zeke is still Zeke. He's not. I mean, he's not as effective as he was early in his career because he's not as young as he was as early in his career. But also, his his stats Why have you dropped off. Excuses, Nate? No excuses. <laughs> Nate, no, does, he, does he have the same offensive line? No, he don't. Okay, what happened when when you put Jason Peters in it? Like I said, you should. Yeah, big things happen. Okie dokie. So when you got some big boys up front, there's actually gaps, and when you got right. gaps, you get hit the gaps. Okay. Otherwise, you're gonna be hitting the back of your lineman in the back. Okay. All right. I just, all right. That's it. That's it. That's you know, all I'm like asking, it. Sorry. We just had to say it with our chest real quick. But yeah. we got my dog in the building. I've known Jared uh, since whew, since I came down here in 2007, Nate. Ooh. Came down here in 2007. Jared. Jared. That's Jared. That's Jared. <laughs> Jared right here. No, but the thing is, he was telling me about himself. Yeah. And about. So when you met him, how old were you, Jared? Man, I was, whew, was I what? 19? Yeah, he was a spring like chicken. 19, 18, 19, not even. 
It was spring chicken. Wow. You know what? Because I for his birthday, you know where I took him for his 21st oh, birthday? Oh, here we go. Twin Peaks. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. I know what my shit, but I know what he wants. Yeah. 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 Twin Peaks, nice. Before we, before we order all them lemonades? Uh, I, don't, I saw a lot ordered it at Twin Peaks' lemonade. <laughs> Yeah. My, my, so my buddy owned Twin Peaks. He was a, he yeah. was a co-owner. So he's always telling me to come through. There's, you know, and I I went over there and took my dog over there. I picked him up, took him over, make sure he had a good time. Hold up, hmm? what'd you pick me up in? I mean, yeah, in my old vehicle. I had an old vehicle. It was an old vehicle. You know, I didn't mm-hmm. have, I it was, was it was yellow. It was yellow. Had some, oh. some flakes in it. Yeah, some had some candy paint. Yeah, it had some boom in there too. It had some had, boom. had to dump in the trunk. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, dump in the trunk. But I, I had I had an H one Hummer back in the day, Nate. Okay. Back when I used to get paid. Now, you know, I got an arm wrestle for, for for money. But uh, <clears throat> back then I used to get checks, <laughs> and I had a vehicle. But good times, man. Back in 07, met this guy, and I. What well, I meet you at? The, the, man, was I met through your dad. Yep. Yeah, his, my dad. His dad, uh, Jack, one of the the, the realest cats I know. Used to work at Home Depot, and I needed a handyman, and he was doing all the stuff, the electrical work. I wasn't trying to kill myself at the house, so I uh, took care of him, took care of him. He took care of me, and met met Jared through that. And then I he saw me training at the gym, and we kind of linked up in that regard, right? So yeah. he, he was I was I think I was like the oddball at the gym, working out, doing my own thing back, you know, my first couple of years in the league. His boy was running sprints in the gym, like. At a commercial gym, running running sprints and doing banded work, <laughs> looking like it's NFL offseason. I wasn't lifting none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know the basketball court that's always nah. in the back of the gym. That's where I was at. Nate had a backpack full of bands, sliders, getting at it. I just look, I think I just look different from everybody else. Hey, by any means necessary, right? Yeah, absolutely. That boy, that boy was getting it in. Yeah, I think after that, man, the rest was the rest was history. I started chopping it up with him. Uh, he had a buddy that would work out with him, and I don't think his buddy could hang. Right, right. And so he uh, he needed me to. <laughs> What's his name? Go ahead and put his name out there. Yeah. Cam. Cam. Cam All right. Daddy. All right. Uh, that boy was didn't he couldn't he couldn't hold his own at times in the, mm. in the weight room. So Zay needed some assistance. He was like, "Yo, yo, Jay, can you come help me out, man? Spot mm-hmm. me here and there. And if you want to get down with some banding work, we can do that too." And then after that, man, we should, I was working out with him. And uh, so, uh, so Jerry was working as up. a trainer. He was working as a trainer there at the gym. Um, but I used to go in there and do my own little thing. But that's that's kind of how it started. So that was back in 2007. Uh, we met. We're now in 2022. So God, add that up, 15 years. 15 years. So we've been rolling for a, for a while. But you know, one of the reasons why I wanted Jared to come on the show, because Jared, he has, a, he has a heck of a story, and we've been in business together in the fitness industry for a while. But uh, one thing that we all have in common, aside from just playing football, has been our faith as well. Yes. And everybody has a story. And I'm, I'm just going to let Jared tell you kind of how where, where he came from and what his upbringing was and everything like that. Man, it's been a, it's been a journey, I tell you that. Um as Nate Nate knows, uh, by any means, I ain't the biggest guy around. Right, right, right. You know? <laughs> Neither is that shirt you got on either. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so it, it's been like that. It's been like that my whole life, right? right. High school, middle school, wherever you want to start. It's always been like that. I was kind of like the little dude, the little big dude. I'd right? always had big homies. Everybody looked down for me. But long story short, man, you know, I was I thought I was a pretty good athlete growing up, and uh, you know, being you know born in Houston. Raised in the Dallas Fort Worth area, attended high school and did college at the University of North Texas. Uh, as everybody, every athlete, you know, I'm gonna be in the NFL, I'm gonna be in the MLB. Who's the greatest athlete to come out of UNT? This is a trick question, Jay. I'm gonna test him out here. Oh, I, uh, he, if he don't know that, he in trouble. Nah, I think he might get in trouble. Me and Joe Green. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Ooh. I thought you, you were okay. gonna say somebody you know else. You know, that's why I wore the green today. Okay. You know All what I'm right. saying? Me and Joe Green. Okay. Yeah, anyhow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> rewind. Bring it back. Um, you know, growing up, you know, you always think you're going to be that NFL athlete or whatever, yeah. right? So uh, growing up, man, I, I ran into a hurdle. I ran into a hurdle. I was actually diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic in college. Wow. Yeah, so 2009, man, I was, the, I was on the high roads. I was like, man, I finally get my opportunity to play football at the, you know, one of the highest levels in college. You know, everybody want to go to a D1 school. At the time, you know, my, my access, my journey was at North Texas. Mm. So I thought I was going to be that guy, be that dude. Walked in, boop, nope, that wasn't it. I got hit with a fence, uh, diagnosed 2009, like I said, and I started having headaches. I was losing weight. You know, I'm not heavy as it is, but, you know, I was like 170 at a time and then dropped down like 155. Mm. And after that, I'm like, man, something's going on. Something's wrong. I'm not sure what's going on. Well, you know, in college, you also go through a number of uh, different things as well. Your appearance, uh, you're going through a lot of emotions. You're doing a lot of different things. Well, I was, you know, I was on a drug, Accutane. 
you know, and most of you guys probably know this drug. This all the with high schools, prescription drugs, college, all the, you know, girls, guys, whatever. I want to clean my face up. So I got on uh, some prescription meds, and the next thing you know, I was losing weight. You know, I was feeling sick, feeling ill. One random day, man, having massive headaches, massive headaches. Well, my mom at the time, she was a type 1 diabetic. And so she was like, you know, why not? Let's just, you know, let's check your blood sugar. So we checked my blood sugar. And if anybody knows how, like, diabetes work, you get this meter. And this yes. meter will tell you what your glucose numbers are. And the meter read high. So ideally, that's probably 400 and Over above. Over 400, yeah. Yeah, yeah. easily, man. Yep. So at that time, I'm like, yo, what's going on, mom's like, you know, I'm in college right now. I'm playing football. What, is this, what does this mean? And she was like, ah, don't worry about it, but I'm going to call, you know, the emergency room, see what we need to do. They was like, hey, have them come in the next day, um, and we'll, we'll do some numbers on them or do some, do some testing. So came in, did some blood work. Uh, they gave me some insulin at the time. You know, at the time, I didn't know what that was, right? Uh, gave me some insulin, made my numbers come down. And so went on about my way. Mom was like, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you some of uh, my meds just to keep with you in your bag. And so I traveled that bag around for the next couple of months, playing football, doing, you know, all of that. And then... So this is when you're 19, 20... Man, this is 19, 20 years old. Like, I'm feeling, like I said, I'm feeling good. And now I'm like, yo, uh, I'm here. I got my opportunity. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, how do I cope with this illness and this disease or whatnot? And at the time, I'm not really diagnosed with anything. I'm just taking meds to bring my numbers down. And so at that point, you know, I'm playing ball, doing everything. At times, you know, I'm catching cramps. Uh, my muscles getting tight for no reason. So we do a little bit more blood testing. And it turns out, yeah, man, I'm a type 1 diabetic. And so had no, you know, prerequisite things coming on, like no other onsets of anything. It was just like, hey, boom, right now, you know, at the age of what, 19, like you're type 1 diabetic. So I'm trying to figure all that out, going through college and everything, like, okay, can I still play ball? Can I still do the normal things that most people want to do in college? And, uh, you know, with the, with the things that my mom instilled in me, and that was the steadfast motto, and uh, being steadfast no matter what the situation is, I was like, man, yeah, I'm going to make this thing happen. So I played college ball. Was, uh, was there anybody else at that time that you knew that was dealing with type 1 that was an athlete? I know moms was dealing with, but you know any you know other what? athletes? Personally, no, but I knew, I think it was Jeremy Shockey at the time. You know, I didn't know him personally, but I had yeah. saw him from a distance still being able to um, cope with that. You know, and I believe I had found out, um, I think Drew Brees had uh, some, some, some kiddos possibly. Uh, uh, David Carr. Uh, is it David Carr? David Carr has three kids. Three David Carr, that's right. David, that's Carr, right. David Carr uh, has three kids, and he got diagnosed, I think, a couple years ago. So he has four people, to my knowledge, in his family. Yeah. His so, household that's dealing with it. Did you know anybody, Nate, that was dealing with that when you played? Nah, man. No? Nah, we just... It's like, what do you do? You know? You don't you don't know what to do at that time. You're trying to see somebody who also looks like you, but, yeah. you know, isn't going through the same things. And so I didn't know what to do. I was calling, calling my moms off and on between uh, workouts, between practices, what do I do? And I'm like, yo... Uh, how am I going to cope with these things? And then, you know, through the grace of God, uh, I managed to, you know, continue through football and uh, made it through that journey. And then, you know, but I recognized, like, you know what? I think I got a bigger purpose in life. You know, I got a bigger purpose in, in this game we call life. And, you know, dealing with that illness, still being able to work out, you know, going through those hurdles. I was like, man, there's going to be somebody else that has to go through this same situation mm -hmm. later on, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a, uh, some type of fitness, wellness instructor, whatever. So don't you think it's weird that we always have a roadblock? <laughs> it's always a roadblock that makes us think, I think I'm supposed to be doing something else. Like, yeah. I, I, think, I think I have a greater purpose here. I feel right. like that's always a conversation. Oh, man. Like, but yeah. I, for me, it was a bunch of injuries. Right. And after that, I said, you know, I, I don't, I don't think God wants me to, Wants me to be too successful That's in this it. sport, so <laughs> let me start, let me start figuring something else out, yeah. right, Jerry? Yeah, type dude. one diabetes, Nate Dog. You, had, I think you had some stuff post career that ended up yeah. making you be like, you know what? Maybe I should change up a little bit. Yeah, it's just you, 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 you live life. That you do, and then uh, for me, just, just you know, and I know I'm getting a little spiritual, man. Yeah. For me, just sitting in a truck, hmm. going over my past history. Of the self-inflicted wounds, the missed opportunities we yep. talked about in prior shows, yeah. and opportunities that presented to you, man, and you just and you just stop and you think, man, and then that's when you go up above, you yep. know, to yep. the man up above, saying, "Wow, if given an, another opportunity, that 
that's because that's what it's all about. Yep. Giving another opportunity, this is how I'm gonna handle it. Yeah, that's it. it. So, yeah, and is I, that why you like driving so much, Nate? Oh, yeah, I man, I think when I drive, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, you don't know this about Nate. Nate is a road trip, <laughs> road trip warrior. Yeah, that boy go like, yeah. like that boy Nate drive down to different country. <laughs> that boy Nate gonna drive to Florida like it's nobody's business. He gonna drive to Florida like he's going to Bucky's. Yeah, I've been to Florida <laughs> maybe what four times that all season, five times. Uh, he drove it. He drove to Cali for camp. But the thing you twice. drive, you you by yourself. You drive yeah, by yourself. Twice. Just just hop in the truck and go. Twice, yeah. But to back back to <laughs> back to where we at, man. Uh, and and see, I meditate. Mm. You know, yeah. I meditate on the word. I meditate on scripture. I meditate. Uh, and what I mean by on the word, it's like I listen to a lot of gospel now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, but back to your story, man. I I, I think. You know, when you when you go through something, you don't know what's wrong. It still look you you was hitting on the edges of what was wrong. You know, your blood was acting up. Yeah, and it still took you how long before you? What months Put it later? Together. Months later. Months later. Because in your mind, you still don't want to believe. Exactly. You don't accept you it. Think that you pump pushing iron, eating, and probably was eating the wrong thing. <laughs> think you're invincible. Yeah, man. Uh, and I tell you, like. After really going through that time in my life, that's really where things kind of moved, things changed, you know. So I think, you know, for those that are going through tough situations or tough times or have encountered a number of different things in life, whether it's an illness, yes. whether it's something in like a relationship, whether it's like financial, whether it's spiritual, like there's a greater purpose in your life. You know, initially you may not see that, mm -hmm. but like you still here. Like if you still walking and you still got life and breath, like there's something, a greater purpose. Supposed to be doing. There's something yeah. you're supposed to be doing. And so that's like I said, that's where things move for me. Like I was like, okay, great. I, I thought I was a, a good athlete, right? right? At least from the community that I grew up in. People were like, oh, this this kid gonna be somebody, right? And as did I. And so while I was going through that, kids on the team, athletes on the team, coaches on the team, they just saw something as humble as I could say within me. They was like, man, whatever you got. I need these these kids, these athletes to have. Right. So, man, I started praying for kids. I started talking to other athletes like, hey, right. man, what are you going to do after you finish college? Like, what you going to do after ball? Right. Um, who are you going to connect with? Like, what's your resources look like? And then, you know, yeah, I met Zay now in that same process. And it was just crazy because at the, you know, my senior year, I'm already thinking now, like, business mindset, entrepreneurship mindset. Right, right. And I'm like, hey, God's got a bigger purpose than just this, you know, pig skin and, and, and grass out here. So at that point, you know, I had also encountered a death in my family. You know, the same person that was giving me strength, the same person mm -hmm. that was allowing me to, um, you know, cope with certain situations, my mom passed. Wow. You know, so I'm in college, diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic. You know, a couple years later, my mom passed. And prior to my mom passing, she was like, look, I don't care about football. This is what I need you to do. I need you to graduate. And she was like, as a black man, a lot of us and a lot of y'all yeah. don't graduate. Wow. Right? High school, college, whatever it is. We whatever, do graduate, but you it's know? in a whole different world. <laughs> it's like a whole different <laughs> yeah. world, right? So yeah. it, was, it was one of those things where it was like, okay, you know, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to I'm I'm prove some of these statistics wrong, right? And so at that point, Man, I focused on my last little bit of my senior year, graduated college early, and got immediately into my profession, right? Mom passed away. I had a, uh, at the time, I had a, what, 11-year-old sister, right. you know, and that was tough, you how, know? How was, your, how was your faith tested during that time? Diagnosed, right? Balls that didn't, didn't go the way that you, that you always dreamed of it going. All of a sudden, you know, mom's got not only was she dealing with diabetes, right, but mom's, you know, ended up getting another diagnosis that she was fighting, um, and then mom's passes, right? During that time, during that all that turmoil, how was your faith te faith test? I know you grew up in a church, yeah. Right? You didn't had a choice. You had to wake yep. up, put your, put your nice clothes on, <laughs> and go to church every Sunday, Wednesday, whatever other day there was. So during that time. Being so faithful, being in that realm, being, you know, uh, having that relationship with God, how was that then challenged uh, during all that? Man, I think at one point, honestly, I thought I wanted to give up. I wanted to quit. You know, it was one of those things that I was like, I, I don't think there's anything else for me. Like, because that, that was my heart and soul. Like, 
everything in that and that, everything that you just mentioned, that's what my I felt like my life was de- designed around. But um, my mom would always tell me, like, no matter what the situation is, you know, no how ma- no no matter what size you are, uh, continue to grind, continue to push, and God will prevail over every situation that you could even fathom. So I was like, you know, let me lean back on what mom said. You know, and at the same time, going through scriptures and uh, praying with the team, even though I was praying with the team, that was giving me a purpose and um, a reassurance in what God was doing through me for the people on this team. Oh, he got something for me. He got something for me on the other side. And so that allowed me to kind of cope and go with it. But, yes, my faith was tested, man. At this point, you see a lot of people just be like, you know what, I'm going to give up. You know, I'm going to throw in the towel. I'm going to go left. Um, we see, you know, especially athletes go a certain direction. And then you see people that just encounter so much in life, you know, they don't know where to go next. They don't know what to do. And so being around a team, having people around me, having, you know, friends and family, um, I was able to get through that, you know, that situation. Nate, dog, what would you say the biggest test of your faith was, not even just during your playing time, but just in life? You know, you know, Zay, I'm always seeming like I'm a little different, a little unique. Uh, my test, uh, what I'm saying is going to be wow. No. Uh, my test was that I'm still alive and not by my own doing. Mm. And it's by the grace of God because how I live my life, from the time I left my father's house when I was 17 years old to up until uh, maybe I was – And how I stayed alive out of all the car wrecks, all the bad incidences with the law, all the bad incidences with my ex-wife, how am I still alive and not have hurt anybody? Mm. That's been my big test. I don't know how I got through it, but I know through the grace of God, that's yeah. how I know how I got through it. Yeah. But I didn't even realize for that span of time, you know, I, I look back a lot of time, man, be about to cry because I'd be like, how am I still alive? Yeah. Flipped the car in D.C. three, four times, threw me out of the car. Only thing I can remember is talking to a police officer. They're like, son, how are you alive? I'm like, yes. wow. You know, fainted, body beat up so bad. You know, so like yeah. I tell you, there's a lot of things I don't share with people because yeah. if, you, if, you, if you don't have the right mindset, I used to try to speak to kids and young people. Can't receive it. And they can't receive it because their moms and dads saying, see, he made it. Mm. God mm. may not have the same plan for you, son. Right, right. So if you go out and get totally drunk and you hit a tree or you flip a car, you may not walk away yep. and play football after that. See, that's what I tell people. This happened and I played 14, 15, 16 more years of professional football. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. So, man, so yeah, that's that's why. Um, so the the we understand you play football. You play a lot of sports growing up. For, matter, matter of fact, I know this is the kind of the football side of of, of, <laughs> right. our, of the Dub Network, right? right? We got the we got the you know Harper got the basketball side. We got we got Minch with the baseball. Yeah. And then we got Ludwig who does the hockey. We got Love. It ain't Uh-oh. always sons. He was a hockey yeah. player. <laughs> so, Nate, how many black hockey players do you know? Uh, it was one. That I knew of, I don't even know if he still exists. Yeah, I know one too. <laughs> oh no, no! Oh man, I know oh, one man. too. How the heck? Before we get into the fitness side, he how was the on heck? the roller skates though, right? Bro, nah, he, no. he, go ahead, he's on the roller it. skates. Tell him about it. He saw Mighty Ducks and changed his life. Game over. That was it. That was it. So you know what's crazy is so when I moved from Houston and we moved down here, I call it like it is. Zay, Zay would be like, yeah, this is the bougie side of town, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah, said, I know, uh, I know. Go ahead and tell him where you're from, Jerry. <laughs> don't tell him. you ain't from Houston. Tell him where you're from. I'm from the Woodlands. The Woodlands, wow. wow. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we moved out here to what Valley Ranch, Capel area, and you know. That area, the, you, the area, okay? The area had a lot of uh, individuals and people and people that just like different sports. And right. hockey was pretty big at the time, right? Dallas Stars, um, you know, were pretty big at the time. And a lot of people were going to what Reunion Arena at the time, point for hockey. Well, anyways, I had a buddy called like it is, you know, Caucasian kid, white kid. Right. And I uh, kicked it with him most of the time. Well, I used to get dropped off at his house, you know, after school. And that boy would go to practice, 
And as us, you know, and myself as competitive athletes, we wanna we don't want nobody to outdo us right. or show us up. So he would go to practice. I'd be upstairs watching through the glass, him playing hockey on the ice. Mm. You know? So at that point, I'm like, you know what? I wanna do this. Okay? So uh-huh. talked to his mom, and his mom was like, yo, we got extra gear. I was like, okay, you need gear? And I was like, yeah, you need a helmet, you need shoulder pads, you need this stuff. Yeah, I was see, like, that's okay. Probably one of the most expensive sports. Oh, yeah. Right now. Oh, yeah. One of the most expensive Baseball. sports. So she was like, cool, I'll get you some stuff. Peep this. She gave me all my gear. It had ants in it. All my gear had ants in the gear. So I had put the gear on, bro, within like five to 10 minutes, I'm getting bit up. Ants all over them, all over. Right. Yeah, no, y'all think this is something crazy. Like, it's a for real, for real. I got set up, right? <laughs> like, boy, you ain't supposed to be playing this sport. <laughs> so I, I dismissed all of that. Didn't want to see hockey no more after that. And then one random day, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this again. Went out there. Fumigated you. Fit boy. Fumigated <laughs> <laughs> you, beautiful. Wow. We got to clear the whole house out when you fumigated <laughs> Don't come back for half a day. <laughs> so, got out there. I put my gear back on, man. Got out there, started skating. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep rocking with this thing. So, from there since, man, I've been playing hockey off and on during college. Uh, I had the opportunity to play for University of North Texas, but couldn't play because uh, they were a club team and I was playing football at the time over there. So, it was kind of a little bit a conflict of interest and so you know my buddies uh, had a buddy on the team who was a uh, intern uh, for the strength and conditioning program at north texas and he played hockey and I kid you not i told him i play hockey he was like you crazy he said you don't play and i was like man i'm telling you what you meet me here and i'll show you what's up and so I kid you not we went out to uh, one of the dr pepper star centers showed him i could skate and from there, man, I've been playing ever since. You know, it's been something that I've enjoyed doing. I mean, it's got all the things you look for in a, you know, a classic sport. It's got hitting. It's got it's fast pace. It's high tempo. You score. Buzzers go off. Music plays. Energy in the crowd. Like, it's got everything. You know, now it's, 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 it's fast. You know, so if you're watching it on TV, you got to keep up with the little puck. It's going to be a little difficult. But... Yeah, you don't see too many African Americans on the ice. Oh, well, you do not. Um, but, but you got one right here. You got one right here. So sometimes they call me the Black Wayne Gretzky. Oh, Lord. Don't you get them fooled, sir. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I listen to you, do. I, I know you, hey, I know you capable, but that's a different level. That's a so, different level. No, so I bring that up because not only is that rare air, but also the fact that plays a part in your, in your fitness regimen, right? So yeah. um, for those that don't know, Jared and myself, we own Steadfast Fitness and Performance. We've been rocking with that for nine and a half years. We're Ooh. out there in Louisville. Uh, we just both felt like, you know, from the time we met each other at the gym, you know, I came out of football and I wanted to have an impact on people's lives. I wanted to stay close to sports. I want to stay close to fitness, but I didn't want anything to do with the politics that, that revolve around both. So we started steadfast uh, and we've been doing that ever since. So I know that you have a passion for fitness, but in terms of your fitness regimen, how much is staying active, you know, through hockey and, you know, dealing, you know, managing your type one diabetes, like how does all the fitness play a part in all that? Man, it's huge, right? You know, activity, like physical fitness is key, man. You got to get up and move, right? The minute you stop moving, I mean, you know, y'all know what that means, but you, you got to stay active because life is so dynamic, Right. You wake up in the morning, you get up, uh, whatever your routine is like, it's just so much movement, so much dynamic stuff going on. So hockey, football, um, being active in that sense has allowed me to not just be physically fit, but mentally fit as well. Mm. You know, and so you wake up in the morning and you see some people that come to, you know, a desk job. They just they get up and they go sit down. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what do they hear later? My back hurt, my shoulders hurt, my neck hurt, my shoulders pronated. And hold on, man. <laughs> hold on, man. What, what you said about the man's shoulders? <laughs> They're pronated. What, what's pronated that shoulders? That's, that's the shoulders rounding roll forward. forward, roll okay. forward. Okay, and why would they roll forward, dog? Because they're on the computer they're all the, the time. They're on the computer, bad posture, all of that. Sometimes you gotta get up, move around. You so know? you gotta sway your chest. Say it with your chest. You yes, know? Yeah, wow. <laughs> Oh, let me get out of the pronate. Free pronate. Come on, don't do me like that. Come on, all right? But yeah, so that, you know, it's played a huge role in just in the fitness realm, you know, and, yeah. and it keeps me active. My wellness is something I'm, you know, I, I really care about, as we all should. Yeah. And, you know, whether you're playing sports, whether you're, you know, doing something that, you know, bike riding or, Basketball, surfing, skateboarding, all that stuff. It's activity. You got to move. Okay. If 
I'm talking to a 60 year old guy like such as myself, what, okay, what, what is, what's something I can do every day? Is it the walking or is it the swimming? What is it that's something that can, 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 you know, just if I'm not that very active guy, mm-hmm. but what is it something that I could do every day, man? Is it just the walking or just get up and do, just move your body a certain way? What is it? Yeah, I think, you know, to be cliche for everything, everybody, yeah, you get up and walk, you can get up and move. I try to tell people, like, what do you, what what did and do you like to do outside of your, your sedentary work, you know, right. your, or, your, or your job? And some people will be like, man, I like to go fishing, right? Or some people will be like, man, I like to, you know, you know I jog around, I got my dog. Right. Uh, right. I know right. you, you drive trucks and all yeah, of that right. good stuff, right? So, you know, for somebody, at, you know, at that age, you know, movement, getting up, walking around the house a couple of times, um, you know, walking outside, some, some easy jogs, some easy walks right. is always right. good. Swimming, you know, you ain't got to go in there and be Michael Phelps, but right, right. get in the pool a little bit, walk up and down, but do Mike, some Mike bites. Mike, hit a little something. Yep. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, my, my, Mike, do it. Change the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, it, you know, in the swimming, so it's easy on the joints, easy right. on the body, right? And nowadays, you know, where we at, and, you know, in Texas and everything, um, it, you know, pools are everywhere, right? Or you hit a gymnasium or something like that, find you an aquatic center, get in the pool, move around a little bit. Biking's always great, easy on the knees. Right. You know, get you a cool little bike. You know, go out there and just throw your headphones in, your ear pods. Right. Um, the main thing is is moving, getting up, moving, doing something. Um, Staying but, consistent. That's the biggest thing. Whatever, whatever you can do on a consistent basis, mm-hmm. find that. You know, get your heart rate up. You know, that, that the cardiovascular health when you start getting up in age is absolutely everything. Um, flexibility, absolutely everything. Yes. You know, both of those things, I would say, are probably the two primaries. Um, the flexibility, the cardiovascular health, and obviously the strengthening, right? Most, most people aren't going to go in there and start lifting a bunch of weights. You don't have to, right? There's a lot of things you can do around the house. There's a lot of different um, alternative exercises that you can do for strengthening, but... We always have our people, at least at the facility, just just move. You know, one of my friends, Kaiza, she's big on, on social media. I, I ran track with her. Her whole little slogan is just move. Yeah. And it's just like just, that just Kaiser, yeah. Rather we have I have people in my neighborhood I see walking every single day. I, I've never met these people in my life. But I get I when I see them, I know who they are because I see their consistency right. walking around the neighborhood. And they're gonna have the headphones on, he's gonna have a little towel in his hand, and he's gonna be moving, right? And he's gonna be walking with his wife. Right. Just, I don't I've never met these people in my life, but I see their their regiment and I know what they're doing, and right. that's their routine. Find a routine that works for you um, and, and do it consistently in a safe, safe environment. That normally will allow you to be consistent too. Something you feel confident with, something that you know right. gets you going. You know, you have fun with it. Uh, don't get out and do something like you just you just hate doing, yeah. right? Because then it's then it's gonna become a, a, a put a burden on you. You're just gonna be like, man, I don't want to do this no more. So go do something fun. Do something. Get up. What what, what have you seen, Nate? For somebody, I know you play with a lot of very successful guys, right? And now everybody's around around the same age frame now. Um, you know. You used to be big Nate. Now you right. medium late Nate. You know, so like, you know, like so. What little, are some of the things? Yeah, what are some of the things that that some of the changes that you that you've made in your life, and what are some of the things that you see in some of the guys you play with? You know what? I I, I, I was like four hundred pounds, mm-hmm. and I did that lap band. Yeah. And then okay, I went down to about two seventy. You know, and then I I went. You know. That man ain't gonna last. That's for you don't yeah. continue to work. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I went up to about about three twenty five, three thirty. Yeah. But then, but then, I don't know what happened. The last, over the last two years, I just I'm not as hungry. Mm. No. So now, like, I'll stop and get a sandwich. Then about two, three hours later, I eat something else, but never a lot of anything. Yeah, yeah. so more frequently, yeah, smaller. I, yeah, I drink more water than anything. Yeah. I have my coffee in the morning, but more water, water absolutely. than anything. And uh, I like green beans, so I'm always eating green beans. And my killer is french fries. Uh, I eat french boy. fries any kind of way you yeah. can put them in front of me. <laughs> Here we but go. But that's, that's, that kills, because I'm, I'm, I'm a type 2 diabetes, mm. so that kills us diabetes yeah. folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Carbs. So I have to be careful on that. But I just, I, I try to move, like y'all said, move every day, eat small meals, never try to go overboard. I gave up all drinking. Huh? You know, say, I, that, I, say that again, yeah, they I gave up yeah. all drinking. Gave it up. You know, the, you know, because first of all, it cost me probably a marriage, my first marriage. Mm. Uh, it, it didn't allow me to be the, the best 
person I could be or the best father I could be. So, you know, uh, God has cured me. I can continue to work on me every day for that. So yeah. uh, I'm big, man. I'm big on just moving around, eating, around, you know, eat, but be moderate about how you do it. My dad used to tell me, I was like, son, you, you just ain't got to feel your plate up. <laughs> yeah, <I don't laughs> that, that's how it was up. then. Yeah, that, I yeah. feel this plate up. So. But now, you know. You know, if it's too late at night, I just go on to bed. Yeah. Because you're going to wake up and you're still going to be hungry. So, I mean, yeah. you eat in the morning, but at least you're moving around in the morning. You yeah. ain't just laying on the, you know. Right. So, that, that's how I change, man. And now I'm like, the other day, you know, I weighed, you know, went in there, you know, how you, you get old to be checking you, you know, checking you out for all these different things. Yeah. yeah. So he put me on the scale, man, I'm like 299. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I want to get on a little bit further, man. Uh, First, I thought something was wrong with me, but then I got to thinking, like, no, big fella, you ain't, instead of eating five pieces of chicken, you ain't eating but two. Yep. Yeah. You know, but I you put it down. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that boy was no. speaking some knowledge. Nate was yeah. speaking some knowledge that's, there. That's yeah. awesome, man. The yeah. thing is, a lot of people, when it comes to fitness, people either feel hopeless yes. or, or they feel as if it's going to be for nothing. Yeah. And I think people lack the confidence that they can be consistent right. in whatever it is that they do. Um, and they, they, they find themselves being impatient, right? They, they, they'll, maybe they'll start walking. Right? I'll, okay. I'll walk the neighborhood. I'll, I'll hit a mile, right? I'll hit a mile, you know, and I'll put my headphones on and I do that. And then it's, that's that one morning. It's just, I don't feel like doing this. Right. And if you allow yourself that, that grace for that day where you're like, I don't want to do that. Then it just seeps in. Yeah. Right now, all that self doubt, now the excuses, now the inconsistencies, and all those other things start coming into it. You just talked about how you made that decision to to start eating specific foods, right, right? and to cut certain things out your diet. Right. Those are conscious decisions. Right. They're not easy decisions, right. but they're conscious decisions, right? And it's really black and white, as we talked about in the past. Is this going to help me, or is this going to hurt me? Right, and then you have to make you really have to lay it on the table like that yeah, because your emotions get into it. Right, so we see it all the time, um, but that you know, is a kudos to you for for making that decision and, and changing your life around that way. Absolutely, I'm gonna tell you, man. All because all of it in the end, you know, I know some people that die, you know, they hold because once you stop, and I don't take this wrong, way, but once you stop, you. you I can't put it, but one way you start yeah. slowly killing yourself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because that's it. once you get too heavy, you don't move, your joints deteriorate. You can't move. Your yeah. Heart You're start, going the opposite direction. Your heart, your liver, your kidneys yeah. start overworking, trying to balance everything that you're purposely doing to yourself. Yep. And you just want, you just, you speed up the process. I should say. Yeah. That's the easier way to put it. Yep. You just speed up the process. Nah, yeah, I don't want to speed up the process. Nah, you go. nah, not you at go. all. Go. Not at all. I mean, those are all crucial things, man, and that's that's what it is, right there. So when you put it in perspective like that, yeah, you know that that should energize, you know, the masses. Like, hey, look, we want to continue to move forward and utilize, you know, what we have, what we have left, right? right? Preserve that as much as possible. So you know, fitness, wellness, like it's important. Yep, like all the way around. Absolutely, because your kids. Your kids are watching you. Too. Yes. Yeah. Great point. I ain't you, got no kids yet, though. Great point. But I'm serious. But when no. you, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> man, when you please, you all that listen to our show, don't stop because I'm saying this. You know, let it inspire you. You know, I say things that kind of that's not. Cause I ain't, I ain't good with mastering words. English, yeah. as you can tell, is not <laughs> how on my list. But when you see a family of overweight people, mm. that bothers me. Cause that is something where your kid have a problem, you you hand them something, you pass it off. Yeah, you know uh, they see you dealing with a problem, you putting something in your mouth, and, and when you see a family of that. And there's not even a small one in there, no way. And, you, and I tell my wife, I'll be like, babe, this ain't it. Yeah. I mean, but you can't walk up to them and say, hey, you know, I got a better way. You just got to pray that. Yeah. Right. Know, 
Wow, that, that bothers mm-hmm. me, man. Understood. Yeah. Because when I was growing up, in my family, in my hood, I don't know about y'all, we did not have, we may have, we may have had one big family. Yeah. Yeah. On the street. You know why, though, Nate? Why? Because we couldn't stay in the house. <laughs> 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 we used to make our parents used to make us get our butt out the house. Yeah. And that's yeah. why. Now, oh, man, you man. see droves of. Yeah. Y'all, what's the name of y'all fitness place where I can just start handing out cards Stay, to folks? Stay Stay fast, fast, fitness and performance, fast, man. Yeah, no, that's wow. awesome. No, nah, man, so, yeah, faith and fitness, man, those are the two two things I think have played a big part in all three of our lives. I think yeah. fitness, whether it was for our sports or whether it was for post-career and, you know, changing our lives for the better, uh, for longevity, you know, the fitness element is important, and then the faith aspect has carried us through and out of yeah. freaking every situation that we can ever yeah. have hope to find our way out of. So, and if I can uh, just ever learn, I pray every day to just quit cussing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, my, that's my biggest thing. That's test. your vice. <laughs> oh, that boy, I will, everybody got a vice. Everybody, well, everybody got a vice. The, the key thing is, too, is like you, re- you recognize things, right? Yeah. And, and it's not, you know, everybody's got their vice, yep. right? right? But uh, you got to humble yourself. You yeah. know, you got to have that sense of humility. You got to you gotta be able man. to tell people, like, yo, this is where I'm screwing up. I'm not the greatest at this. I'm not the best. Right. But that's going to only make you better in the long run. Yeah. Man, man what? Well, hey, Real quick before we get out of here, y'all, on, you know, obviously Jared just shared that he's type 1 diabetic, Nate's type 2 diabetic, yeah. my daughter's type 1 diabetic. We have a lot of diabetic connections right, <laughs> sitting right, right here at right, this table. Right. Um, but for the type 1 community specifically, we're going to, it's called a JDRF uh, walk. And it's going to be, that's Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Wow. Uh, my wife is on the board. We're very active. Jared and I have done things with the organization nonstop. My daughter has been a representative as a young ambassador going out to D.C., talking to the people on Capitol Hill and very, very involved. But on November 12th, uh, wow. we're going to, they have a, a big walk and that's going to be at Choctaw Stadium, which used to be the old Ranger Stadium. Oh, okay. okay. Out there in Arlington. Choctaw. Yeah, it's Choctaw now. They, they put up I the big dollars. Or yeah, they put up the big dollars. <laughs> but there's going to be a, a, a fun run and a walk out there. And we're going to, Jared and myself and Steadfast family, we're going to be starting off the event. November 12th. remind me, man. I got you. I got you. November 12th, but it's going to be a... If I can, I will. But if you guys go on JDRF.com and and go to that, go to that um, that walk on November 12th, you guys can sign up for Team Team Steadfast. It's actually Mighty with Mellitus. Uh, Mighty with Mellitus is the name of the team. Or Mighty Steadfast. Mighty yeah, Mighty, Mighty Steadfast is the team. So Mighty Steadfast, join our team. You guys uh, put some donations in there if you guys want to affect the lives of those that, have, that are dealing with type 1 diabetes. Um, and we love for you, anybody out there, to come join our squad. So go out there, make donations, sign up, come walk with us. Um, it's going to be a good time. But, you know, now we have our faith, we have our fitness, and we're trying to pass that on to other people and That's impact their about. lives. That's what it's about. Bet, bet. Whether, whether you medium but I don't know if I'm medium <laughs> what are you I'm extra medium yeah is the medium are you Zeus are you mini Hulk <laughs> <laughs> he got a new name, Mini Hulk. Hey, man. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in, y'all. This is another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs>